What happened on April 12th, 60 years ago? космический корабль спутник восток человеком на борту For the first time in human history a man launched into space His name Yuri Gagarin Yuri Gagarin Born in the USSR at the age of 27, became the first person in history to go to the outer space and to orbit the Earth. His flight lasted for 1 hour and 48 minutes. A human not having any wings and still being able to fly? That already sounds bold, crazy, and unbelievable, doesn't it? But a person in space? Isn't that just mind-blowing? It's hard to say where it all started, because a man has always dreamt of being able to fly. But the idea of flying to space seemed just unrealistic and a fantasy for a long time. Konstantin Tsialkovsky, a prominent Russian rocket scientist, a philosopher and a dreamer. He became a pioneer of the astronautic theory and a devoted advocate for sending a human to space. Konstantin Tsialkovsky. But in his most daring predictions, the first human in space would happen no earlier than in 2017. 2017! In reality, it happened 56 years earlier. The theoretical studies of Konstantin Tsiolkovsky inspired another genius mind. Sergei Karolyov. He was obsessed with flights and building planes and he became passionate about the idea of building a space rocket. Sergei Karolyov, a lead Soviet rocket engineer and spacecraft designer, who today is often referred to as the father of practical astronautics. In October of 1957, the USSR launched the first ever satellite in space, Sputnik 1. The Russian Sputnik means satellite. Sergei Karolyov, together with his group, designed and constructed Sputnik 1 in less than a month, it looked like a polished metal sphere, powered by batteries. And to launch it to space, Sergei Karolyov used a rocket that had been launched successfully 
only once before. The world was stunned. And this event officially became the starting point of the so-called space race between the USSR and the US. The next satellite, Sputnik 2, that was launched less than a month later, already had a passenger on board, a doggy, whose name was Laika. The urgency was dictated by the Soviet Communist Party. The deadline of November 7, 1957, was to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the October Revolution. Though Soviet rocket engineers had already sent 12 dogs to suborbital flights since 1951, they had never sent one to the Earth orbit. So, the new spacecraft Sputnik 2 had to be designed and constructed from scratch. And it was somewhat of a rushed job. The spacecraft was equipped with a life support system that would be enough for seven days, meant to keep the dog cool and give her food. Unfortunately, there were some issues with thermoregulation and Laika died from overheating. But Laika forever became the first animal in history to orbit the Earth. On one hand, Soviet rocket engineers continued to perfect satellites and, on the other hand, they continued to send dogs to suborbital flights. They actually preferred to work with stray dogs, mutts, because they were loyal, hardy, easy to train, and they could stay still for a long time. Finally, three years later, in August 1960, these studies combined and two other doggies, Bielka and Strelka, became the first two animals to orbit the Earth and to successfully come back. Their flight lasted for 25 hours. Those two dogs, Bielka and Strelka, became instant heroes. And by the way, one of the puppies born to Strielka was given as a gift to the Kennedy's family. The spaceship that brought the two dogs to the orbit and back, Sputnik 5, became a prototype used for the human space flight a year later. At that time, six people were also training to be one of the first space travelers. In Russian, it's Kosmonavty. Kosmonavt was a role that had never existed before. Back then, the requirements included being a professional fighter pilot in perfect health, no older than 30, whose height is under 175 centimeters or 5.7 feet, and whose weight is under 70 kilos or 155 pounds. Nikolai Kamanin who was responsible for the preparation of the first cosmonauts, or astronauts, said back then, 
кого посылать на верную смерть. И столь же трудно решить, кого из двух-трех достойных сделать мировой знаменитостью и навеки сохранить его имя в истории человечества. It's difficult to decide who we should send to certain death. And it's equally difficult to decide who deserves the most to become a world-famous star, whose name would be kept forever in the history of humanity. In the end, Yuri Gagarin was chosen for this role. Первым для выполнения космического полета назначить старшего лейтенанта Гагарина Юрия Алексеевича. And then, April 12, 1961, about 9 a.m. Moscow time. Космодром Спейспорт. Космодром Байконур. This is when Yuri Gagarin said his famous words. Поехали! Let's go! And launched into space on board of the spacecraft Vostok 1. He orbited the Earth for one hour and 48 minutes. This is when the history was made. New goals were born and the world would never be the same again. Actually, very little people knew about this flight being prepared. Even Gagarin's own mother was unaware of that. Yuri Gagarin experienced some issues during his landing and at about 7,000 meters or 23,000 feet he ejected himself and landed safely with a parachute. He had to land several kilometers away from the designated spot. So imagine what random people who saw him first thought. Someone in a futuristic helmet walking towards you. I И увидела просто, можно сказать, чудище. Поднимается с земли оранжевый, огромный. И я бабушке говорю, ты смотри. Она схватила меня за руку. И мы с ней побежали. Он крикнул, мамаша, мамаша, стойте свои. И я тогда бабушке говорю, бабушка, остановись. Он говорит по-русски, человек, наверное. By the way, in this famous picture of Yuri Gagarin, you can see 
SSSR, USSR, written on his helmet. But that was actually done at the very last minute, just in case he lands in a different country. This event revealed so many new opportunities. Two years later, in June 1963, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman in space. And till now, she's been the only woman who went to space alone without a team. And two more years later, in 1965, Alexei Leonov became the first human to conduct a spacewalk. He spent 12 minutes and 9 seconds outside of his capsule. Yuri Gagarin became a world-renowned star, a legend. He received tons of awards. He went on a two-year world peace tour. He was invited to the Buckingham Palace to dine with the royal family. But Yuri Gagarin himself was pretty down-to-earth about his role. This is what he wrote in his diary. The Soviet government didn't want to send him on new missions. They were afraid to lose the legend. But what everybody was afraid of still happened in the end. Yuri Gagarin died in March of 1968 during a routine training flight. The MiG fighter jet with him and his flight instructor on board crashed because of adverse weather conditions. The news of Gagarin's death resulted in nationwide mourning, usually reserved for national leaders. Gagarin's wife received the letter that he had written long time ago, before his historical spaceflight. She never married again. Today, April 12th, is celebrated as the Cosmonautics Day in Russian-speaking countries. Dien Kosmonautiki. And it's also the International Day of Human Spaceflight, dedicated to the first manned spaceflight made on April 12th in 1961 by the 27-year-old Russian-Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. Говорит Москва. Передаем сообщение ТАСС о первом в мире полете человека в космическое пространство. Пилотом, космонавтом космического корабля «Спутника Восток» является гражданин Союза Советских Социалистических Республик, летчик майор Гагарин Юрий Алексеевич. Мы 
Gagarin est à Moscou et dans un instant il va rencontrer Yuri Gagarin. Et maintenant le cosmonaute Gagarin est à Moscou et dans un instant il va rencontrer Yuri Gagarin.